The GFS model keeps persisting that within the next seven days, we should see a tropical storm develop just off the Central American coast. Taking a look at the latest run of the GFS model, we have seen some changes compared to yesterday, yesterday regarding the exact track of this tropical of this potential tropical cyclone and moving forward with what the GFS model is stating. Of course, the GFS model expects that there's going to be an influx of moisture that's going to come off the south the northern south american coast and that should and it should have enough time over water to develop a well consolidated and well organized enough low pressure system for a potentially strong tropical storm to develop now we do see that for the midweek it should primarily be mostly quiet throughout the caribbean the ridging is still a little bit too strong for much of this moisture over south america to move northward and have the possibility of developing but that will change once we approach the weekend where by friday we will see an influx of moisture move northward we will see an enhanced area of convective activity that should allow the pressure to lower along the surface just enough for the potential of a tropical storm to exist and we see that um this strong area of convective activity as early as friday so within the five to four day window we see that the gfs model is still confident that there's going to be an enhanced area of convection um as we approach um late this week and moving forward with the forecast we see that eventually the thunderstorm activity will enhance will definitely increase we're going to see heavy rain associated with this low pressure system and it'll only be enhanced by the usual um, central american gyre that typically happens um during the early part of the hurricane season and we see that by the sunday time frame we see a very large area of convective activity and the pressure eventually drops and we see a tropical um, storm on our hands let me go back to a forecast model i apologize for that let me go back to um the western atlantic there um okay that's the map I was looking for. So moving forward with the forecast, we do see that the pressure lowers down to 1,001 millibars and it's just off the coast of Belize. However, we have seen a shift with regarding the exact trajectory of this storm system, which may potentially be good news because we're seeing this storm move a little bit further westward than, than anticipated. While it might be bad news for those along the central american coast because you're bound to experience more rainfall if this area of moisture were to move closer to the coast however it could also potentially be good news because since this storm would deal with more land interaction it's less likely to become um, a lot stronger or intensify a, a lot faster if it were to deal with the more land interaction of central america so its peak intensity could be a lot lower with this storm if it were to deal with more land interaction but we still do see that this storm still despite the land interaction does become quite strong with its millibar pressure dropping down to 987 millibars which is equivalent to i'll say probably a category one hurricane and we see this make landfall in belize as we approach early next week of course this is very far out there's going 210 hours out so there's still a lot that could change we've seen um we've seen over the past several runs that i'll say the beyond the point at which a storm is just north of jamaica in terms of latitude that's where the forecast has changed dramatically where sometimes the gfs model wants to take the storm a lot further westward and we even see landfalls towards the close to the coast of texas while other scenarios of the gfs model bring it more towards florida and up along the east coast in a very very um potentially dangerous um, scenario for much of the east coast and it's definitely rare for that time of the year during the early part of the hurricane season in june it's very rare for a tropical cyclone to move um, up the east coast especially with sea surfers this slow um, at least compared relative to the hurricane season average so we still could easily see the trajectory change beyond the point at which this storm moves north of jamaica but the gfs model has still been persisting that a tropical cyclone will develop but we also need to be aware of the fact that just because the gfs model been persisting on this idea does not mean it'll actually occur because the european model has been stating the opposite over the past 
um, several days and the Europe, both the European model and GFS model been very persistent on their ideas and haven't really shifted away or haven't really caved um, into following um, one at least one of the G, of the the computer models, so there's still a high amount of uncertainty, and we do see that the GFS model does sometimes tend to have bias when developing certain low pressure systems a little bit too quick, especially during the early part of the hurricane season, where most of the time the conditions aren't conducive enough for a tropical cyclone to develop as rapidly and as intense as what we see right here making landfall in Belize. So we need to take this with a grain of salt, certainly, but it's at least suddenly something to be aware of because the GFS model has been persisting on this and it's still considered a reliable um, computer model so we can't completely disregard it either i'll keep you guys updated once we definitely get more certainty with the forecast but the shift we did see today is that the gfs model is expecting a little bit more ridging which could be good news because that would steer the moisture a little bit further westward to interact with land a little bit more and it won't get as intense which has been a good trend that we've been seeing we need to see if that trend holds up um but if um, and if it does, then we're more likely to see a European model scenario where it doesn't want to develop much of uh, um, pretty uh, really no tropical storm in the Caribbean. So we're definitely going to need to keep in mind of if this trend develops over the next several runs with the GFS model. Now, let me show you guys the European model. Actually, before I show you guys that, let me show you guys the even more long term forecast where interestingly enough, we see that the convection stays over the Yucatan Peninsula and we see that this area of convection could potentially lead to another potential of, trop of tropical cyclone development right over the Caribbean moving towards Florida and up the East Coast. Of course, this is a fantasy scenario at this point, but this increased amount of convection that this uh, potential low pressure system could produce um, might not necessarily lead to this specific area of moisture developing into tropical cyclone but it at least could enhance the convection just enough for the potentially in the more long-term future another tropical cyclone develops out of this central american gyre which is which isn't uncommon for the month of June. We see that the Central American Gyre does typically bring uh, an enhanced area of convective activity. So that could potentially lead to a tropical storm in the more long term future. But we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, let me show you guys a European model scenario. The European model hasn't really shifted its forecast much either. The only notable change I've seen um, with the Europe, with the latest European model run compared to yesterday is that the European model does expect an enhanced area of convection to occur right around this weekend. So that maybe could be something that maybe could not. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see if it's a trend that would lean more towards the GFS model. But we do see that now the European model does develop a low pressure system right around Saturday, June 17th. At nearly the same time period, the, Europe, the GFS model wants to bring an enhanced amount of convective activity to the Western Caribbean. So we're going to need to keep in mind of this as well to see if this could actually develop into something or this could be a trend that will continue to um, that will continue to potentially enhance the possibility of a tropical storm developing just off the Central American coast, but we're just going to have to wait and see over the next several months. I know that it might be frustrating not to know all the details about this potential storm right now, but it's but with both of the reliable computer models in a high amount of disagreement, it's really it's really difficult to iron out the forecast, especially when it's over five days out. So I, I wish I could give you guys the exact answers, but computer models and of course, um, historical data isn't at that level yet to uh, properly measure tropical cyclones that accurately this far out. I just want to give you guys all the scenarios to really get a good gist of um of what's what is to potentially occur as we approach a weekend just so you guys can at least be aware of the possibilities and at least know way ahead of time just in case 
um, you need to potentially prepare for a potential tropical cyclone, even if it may not exactly occur. So I'll keep you guys updated once we do see um, any major changes regarding the certainty of this forecast. But in terms of the European model, we do, do see that while the European model does develop a low pressure system, it still moves a little bit too far west to have enough time over water for the pressure to lower enough along the surface for this to develop into a tropical storm. And we still mainly see a highly convective area over Central America, but not really any tropical storm development in the Caribbean. So we're definitely gonna need to pay close attention to the ridging just the north of it. Let me show you guys that right now. The reason why the European model does not want to develop develop any tropical storm in the Caribbean is due to this amount, um, strong amount of ridging that's just to the north of all this convective activity. And what this ridging is doing is forcing this convective activity further westward rather than northward. So it deals with more land interaction right over Central America. And does it have enough time over water to necessarily develop um, compared to uh, uh, area of convective activity that would move further northward and have a lot more time over the warm Caribbean waters. So for the European model to enhance its possibility of a tropical storm developing, we're going to need to see this ridging weaken over the next several days um, in, um, when it comes to its forecast. So we would see the convective activity move northward and have more time over water to strengthen into a tropical storm. And we see that the ridging is just too strong in the European model scenario. And there isn't enough of a dip in the troughing here in the eastern half of the United States. Another potentially inhibiting factor could be the strong upper level winds. However, the GFS model at this point is currently expecting that there's going to be a small area close to Central America where the wind shear will primarily be around moderate. We're going to have a small upper level trough that's going to be located right over Florida. That would bring a relatively strong area of wind shear right over the Caribbean islands, but over Central America, there might not be enough um, that wind shear might not necessarily move far west enough to necessarily affect the um, the um, this storm um, when it comes to wind shear, and we do see a strong upper level high, which would divert the upper level winds away from the um, from Central America. So this could allow a small area where the storm is able to develop, where the wind shear is just light enough for the storm to become well organized, for the energy to focus in around center circulation, and not get heavily diverted by the strong upper level winds. And in fact, this um, these strong upper level winds could in fact enhance the storms. Um, potential strength because that would improve the outflow and that would overall improve the circulation and the upward motion that would be associated with a developing tropical storm. So this could potentially enhance um, um, this storm's tropical storm intensity if the conditions play out right and we see that the upper level winds stay away from this storm. We're just going to have to wait and see. Really all depends on the position of this upper level low that would be located right over Florida, but I'll keep you guys updated. Here's a look at the current water vapor imagery over the Caribbean, and we do see that there's a strong amount of wind shear right over the Caribbean islands. We have an upper level low that's located right over the southeastern portion of the United States, an upper level high that's located over Mexico that's bringing a decent amount of dry air to the Gulf of Mexico, so should, um, conditions should be drier than average. And we do see that the Central American gyre is still going on where there's heavy thunderstorm activity, especially in the higher elevations of the Central American countries. And we see an influx of moisture moving through South America where there's going to be plenty of convective activity over the next several days that could potentially lead to our next tropical storm. Take a look at the global tropics hazards outlook over the next few weeks. We do see that on the week of June 14th, 
Conditions should be drier than average over Mexico thanks to an upper level high that's going to continue to steer dry air towards the Gulf of Mexico and we do see that it's going to primarily be average when it comes to precipitation right over the Caribbean. However, as we move into June 21st, there should be an influx of moisture that moves into Central America and portions of the main development region which could promote more tropical cyclone activity. I'll keep of course I'll keep you guys updated so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for further updates.